Hello everyone, welcome back to Ghost Prime Transformers Views. Today I'm going to take a look at the Centurion droid from the Generation Selects line. Now this guy uh, was on Hasbro Pulse as an exclusive, and I do believe he's sold out as of now. He comes with a bunch of accessories, and mainly you're buying the accessories and getting the figure for free. He is a complete and utter repaint of Brunt. He is exactly the same figure as Brunt, head, everything, no retooling at all. He does come in this nice silver grayish color with a nice silver accents and some sort of bronze and red accents. It is a nice looking figure actually. It does set it apart from the other repaints we have gotten of this mold. Now, one thing about the Centurion drone is they first appeared in Generation 1 and they were green and had spiky shoulders like a fishbowl head, almost looked like Mysterio. So in 2005, I think, uh, IDW came around and they made the Centurion drones look like this. So the Brunt figure was actually made off of this design for this character. So it makes, kind of makes Brunt the repaint, to be honest, even though it came out first. And in Generation 1, they were very mindless. And in the Dreamwave comics, I believe they were uh, commanded by Bludgeon. Uh, I don't remember. It's been a while, actually, since I've read those. Uh, however, I do believe this figure does the design justice. And like I said, he comes with a ton of extra accessories for other figures. Bumblebee, Cliff Jumper, uh, Hound. Oh, he just a ton. Optimus Prime. He has the roller and the uh, a gun for Prime. So I'll be going over all those. So without any further ado, let's get to the review. All right, let's take a look at the packaging first. So he comes in a very standard Generations... Uh, selects Cybertron War for Cybertron Trilogy packaging. He does have the Deluxe Centurion drone and his War for Cybertron address right there. Other than that, pretty brown, pretty basic. Open it up. You have the figure himself and this box. And this box contains a ton of accessories. Now you also have on the top flap here a list of all the accessories. Well, more of a an overview. Uh, a couple things are incorrect. There are no pegs on the Energon cubes. That must have been a, a last minute change. So in the package, obviously you get the robot and his blaster or his gun or however you want to, whatever it is, goes on the back like that. You get This bag of accessories. And you get the instruction booklet. Now, he does have a Decepticon logo here, although he does not have any Decepticon logos anywhere else. Actually, it's a bunch of Autobot logos on the packaging. But you get instructions that are pretty clear and laid out. I have not compared these with Brunt's to see if they're the same, but you do also get a list of what comes in the package again, right here. Now there is an Optimus Prime here, but this is like three or four times, maybe even larger the size of the actual figure. All right, let's take a closer look at the figure itself. Now the figure itself is a direct repaint of the Brunt figure that we got in the Siege line. Um, overall, he is he's done in a, a nice uh, silver plastic gray, uh, has a couple different shades, uh, as like the, I don't know if you can see it here, but it's a different shade for the thumb piece and the arm and this, these are actually two slightly different shades, a bunch of red accents. He's got some of these bronzish accents and some blacks on there. Overall, I think the, the color breakup is quite nice. Um, it really is. Some of the, the silver pieces, especially like, like over here, they really contrast really nicely with the the rest of the figure. I think there's, it's done up really, really nice. It has a nice gleam, nice shine to it. Um, I do have a paint error, right? Get that in focus. Right there on mine, which kind of looks like it's bleeding out of his shoulder. But overall, he's not too bad. Uh, for uh, some comparison real quick, here he is with Siege Brunt. They are, as you can see, exactly the same, same head and everything. Here he is with the Drill Dasher character. 
Uh, transformation and everything is exactly the same. Articulation is exactly the same. His uh, elbows are go like this. He does have a 360 at the, L the, the bicep, thumb, in and out. Rotate the arms, 360 at the head, 360 at the waist, leg out to here, back, forward, knee goes 90, and he has the thigh swivels and ankle rotations. And of course, he's a weaponizer. He could do all the same things as Brunt and the other figures, so I'm not going to go through that. Please watch my... My, my other review of Brunt, if you'd like to see the transformation, how these pieces come apart. So for now, I'm just going to skip to his vehicle mode. And there he is in tank mode. You can see his little head poking up. Again, how the colors look. Very nice in uh, this mode. And he rolls really well. I have to say that there's been no noticeable mold degradation. Everything's really tight. Even when you snap the legs in here, very, very tight on this. Rotation still. Still is, still is really nice. Rolls really, really well. Now, of course, what everyone wants, wanted to get into, what everyone's interested in here, of course, is the weapons pack. Now, they do come bagged all together like this in a baggie. Mine did not have any tape on it, and they're just loose, loose in there. So let's dump these out. Hopefully not losing the little prime. And take a look at them. All right, and in this box, you get Optimus Prime's Battle Axe. Now he does have his, just peg it to his hand right there. It's a little sharp, it's actually made of hard plastic. Usually these things are rubberized, but I guess maybe you can't because it's, it's clear. I don't know if it'll scratch there. Oh, nope, just a little piece of plastic. First time I've dumped all these out. So yeah, looks pretty nice, shiny, hard plastic. You also get Optimus Prime's roller that he did not come with on the leader class figure. You get a much larger gun for Optimus Prime, just massive gun, which can't attach to roller, but looks ridiculous. You get a shockwave or shackwave figure because he's gray. Now this could have done with some paint. I really think that this would have been really nice and a nice purple and they so could have done it. I don't know why they did not. They did paint this because it, and it was cast in gray. So they could have painted that. You get Megatron, which has a painted handle and a painted scope. Where did it go? It got away from me. You also have his silencer piece, which let's see if I could, it's so tiny. Camera doesn't want to focus on it. There you go. And that goes right onto the end. Like so. And has a little nub at the end for blast effects. Two Energon cubes which are hollow on one side, and looks like you have one that's being filled up. It'd be real nice to uh, be able to have a guy hold these, because this is where the, the peg would have been. Bumblebee's blaster. Blaster for cliff jumper. Sideswipe, or Optimus Prime's, it's really sideswipes, but Optimus Prime wore it too. Uh, his backpack as jetpack. Also would be nice to have this painted red. Trailbreakers radar dish. A tiny, tiny sound wave. A small reflector. Teensy, 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 teensy prime. All right, look at that though. It's actually got a lot of really, really nice details. Let's see if I get my camera focused on it. Really nice detail on that guy for being so tiny. And you get this right here, which is a, this goes to uh, Ironhide. And last but not least, this is Megatron's mace. And now it would be nice if this were an actual chain, 
but instead it's solid and there is a little Decepticon logo right there and the two like the axe slides into the hand. Now for the cage right here that Ravage is supposed to go in, it does split apart. So you could put Ravage in it and cage him up. It does go back in very easily. I just want to break it because it is clear plastic. So I'm afraid of breaking off these little tabs. It's hard to do on camera, but you can see it's done in like this. I don't know if you can tell, but yeah, there you go. Like a trans little translucent uh, smoked gray plastic uh, and or maybe paint. Actually, it looks like it's clear and painted that way, painted all the way around. So be careful pushing that in and out. So let's, uh, let's see how these accessories look on the characters. All right, so first let's start out with Optimus Prime, the accessories that will go with him. So here we have Leader Class Optimus Prime's trailer and we have the roller accessory. So if you open up his, let's do it this way. I can't get it like that. Open up his trailer right here, you have roller. And roller fits in here really well, really nicely. Uh, there's this little uh, little peg right there on the bed, and there's a little hole right there on the bottom of roller, and that will just there, kind of. It's not. It fits over the top of it, not too snug, um, but it fits over the top of it. If I could get it to work, there we go. So it doesn't fall out really, but that goes that goes there. And yeah, you know, that completes it, which it, it was definitely needed. Absolutely needed. Also, you could have the trailer roller pull the trailer. So I'm really glad they added this roller accessory. It's really cool. Uh, it's very fun that they finally put it in there. Uh, that, that's a very enjoyable thing. Now you also have his Ion Blaster. That replaces his old one. So let's take a look at the two side by side. <laughs> this thing is super large in comparison. This looks very tiny. So let's bring it up his Prime here. The camera up and in focus. Let's see how this looks together. There. That actually is far too large. It looks great, but it is it is pretty big. Um, it, it's cool looking though. Definitely, definitely, definitely more G1. Uh, if I get it out of his hand without breaking anything. There we go. And then, of course, he also has his Energon X. And that could go slip on over his fist like so. And that looks cool. That looks really nice from at least one side. Uh, from the outside, from the inside, you can see the fist. It would be nice maybe they put it on the bottom, but they did not. Um, but okay, so overall, uh, it's neat. It's neat. So together, that's kind of nice. Kind of moving on just a little bit here. Let's take the trailer out. I don't have side swipe, but I do have the a red alert figure here, which is the same mold. So you have the side swipes jet pack here, and there's a peg on the back that's supposed to peg into here. So if we go like this and push that on and you can see the shape is exactly there and that fits quite nice. Also in the episode that this was from, he gave it to Optimus Prime. Now let's see how this thing looks on the Prime figure. Again, he has a a peg right here and there's another peg on top so you can fit it just like that on Optimus Prime and it fits really nicely over here really nice and snug it's it's on there very well as that falls off but yeah this is really cool all right moving on to the the gun uh, Megatron gun here now we all know who this is for 
Here's how he looks being wielded by Starscream. That actually looks very cool. I really like that. That looks super nice on Starscream. Let's move on to the Megatron's mace here. Right, here is Earthrise Megatron with the mace. Uh, now the mace, so you see the Decepticon logo comes facing out. It does not fit on the other side of the fist, this, this piece here. It is designed so this part here covers the inside of his fist and his outside of the fist is open like that. It still fits in very, very tightly though. So be careful which direction because it could get stuck in there and you don't want to break this on the way out. But it does look pretty neat on his hand like that. Uh, I do have to admit. All right, next up we have Ironhide's Drill. Now Ironhide is wielding his drill accessory. Now this is something that I will definitely probably keep on him or the Earthrise version. And that looks really nice. Would be nice if this was painted, painted black. This would be really, really nice. Uh, but I didn't. A lot of these things would be nice with some more paint. All right. Now we have Shockwave and Shockwave or Shackwave, which this is definitely more appropriate for Shackwave. There we go. Here's how he looks wielding himself. Ah, oh, that just sounds dirty, but he did it in the cartoon. So there he is. All right, so now let's compare Reflector. Again, with no paint. Now you can paint these things if you, if you want to. Uh, I would uh, suggest a magnifying glass. He is hollow on the back, but he has a little peg so you can be held. As you see, he looks very close. Let's see if I get that in focus. to this one, but he actually looks a little bit more like the Generation 1 than he does this one. All right, here he is with Megatron. Hoist using Trailbreaker's satellite dish. Here is Cliff Jumper with both pistols, uh, his, his pistol and Bumblebee. Since I don't have Bumblebee, I gotta show it to you here. All right, lastly, let's uh, take a look at a couple of the last remaining bits here. Uh, you can see Prime is whole holding a little version of himself. It's like he's got the toy in his hand. So that's how big that, that little Prime is in comparison to this leader class Prime figure. And then we have Soundwave here. He's holding Soundwave because of this Soundwave is hollow in the back. And he's able to hold it because he does have grips. Now, you couldn't hold this Soundwave otherwise. You just kind of have to set it on your shelf. Kind of a bummer there, but, you know, it's not too bad. Same with the, uh, the Energon cubes. Now, if you have a Transformer figure that, is, that has, you know, uh, finger grips, then you could probably, you know, put it on like that. And there is a hole here where there should have been a place to hold it. I think it is cool that they, they have the little filling... Like it's like it's being filled on one of them. The other one's just either probably looks like it's full, but these are these are very cool. I wish Shadowweave could actually hold them really well. Um, it'd be really neat to see maybe display Soundwave with them and it's like coming out of his chest. I think that'd be a really cool way to display it. But overall, I think this is a pretty decent set. Um, so for some final thoughts on it. So yeah, this guy's pretty cool. I definitely like the accessory pack he comes with. It does, does enhance the figures a bit. I do wish there was a lot more paint on them. The paintwork on this was actually fairly nice and the color break breakup was way nicer than I expected. The downside is it's very expensive, the troop build, if you could even find this anymore. And then you're left with just a ton of extra accessories that some of really only go to certain figures and you can't really add them to other figures without it looking sort of off. However, I do enjoy this. I think overall it's good. I wouldn't have minded a different figure with the accessory pack rather than him so you could do the troop building aspect. And weaponizers are always fun. You can't have too many of them. So please hit that thumbs up button if you like this video. The downvote button if you have to. Subscribe. I'll see you guys next time very soon.